Hello, I'm Dr. Kill, aka Dr. Shill, brought to you by Coke. And with me here is... I'm Zyke here. And today we're going to Snowhead Temple. And the best way to do that from here is to go towards the fairy fountain. Oh, of course. Uh, that will... Well, first thing, we need to turn in our fairies that we got from Grey Bay. There's also a, uh, a shortcut to Snowhead from there. Uh, first little, little trick here. If I turn into a Zora while in the water, it uh, sort of transforms you a little bit higher than Child Link is. And that's enough to grab the ledge up here. It's another little weird circumstance that's caused by the differing heights between the Link's forms. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen this trick done a lot with the other, like, speedruns like Awesome Dames come quickly. They do a lot of, uh, I guess, they, go, they usually go to Great Bay Temple. Is there a reason Great Bay Temple, or is it just, like, it's the closest for when the run works? Uh, you mean from going there from here? Yeah, like, is it, like, is just Great Bay the first place speedrunners just go to for these, so that's why they go to it? Well, not really, it's kind of... Uh, different stuff. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, I need to demonstrate some stuff. So normally, when you fall off a ledge, you, I mean, you go against the ledge, you just fall off, right? Obviously. Right. But if I slash my sword, I can inch closer to the edge, and he'll never fall off the ledge. Uh, th this is just particular programming that they've done for the game. You're never supposed to be able to fall off a ledge while you're slashing a sword. Hmm, that's, and, that's... and so, if I get infinite sword, I can I can walk up against this ledge and even roll up against it, and I won't fall off. Oh, okay. That'll be important for something that's coming up. In any case, um, so speedruns for this game, I don't know, it's for depending on the route, there's a lot of different reasons. But, alright, now I'm going to go to Snowhead from this fairy fountain because, uh, I don't know, depending on when you've seen it, if you've seen a speedrun, you might know what, about this. It's an old trick that's not, not as useful anymore for the regular speedrun. But, um, all the fairy fountains in the game, they're on the same map, or the same right. scene, I suppose. Uh, it's terminology. They're all on the same map. They're just arranged uh, sort of parallel to each other, like in a line. Every single one of them. And the way that works is that the collision and the the loading zones for all of them are loaded. Uh, uh, anytime you're in any fairy fountain, they're all loaded. So what I'm trying to do is I need to get up on this pillar right here. I had a little trouble getting up, up here. Get on the pillar. I need to get to the other pillar. But from there, I can actually hover out of bounds and hover all the way into a different fairy fountain. The textures won't be loaded, but the collision mesh, the the what I collide against, and the loading zones for everything will still be there. Was there a reason that the fairy fountains were all in one area with all that? Was it a memory thing, or was it just like something they decided to do con for convenience? Um, I'm not, I don't know for sure. Uh, it's just it might have been just easier to do it this way instead of having each uh, separate maps and stuff. Fair enough. So, I've landed in the other one. The collision's there, this is why I'm not falling down forever. And if I walk backwards, I'll end up outside of the fairy fountain to Snowhead. So right here. It's interesting that the uh, background color changes based on the temple's fairies. Like, you know, Snowhead's green. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Okay, so, right here, what I'm doing, I have to get infinite sword glitch, and I only have one chance to do it. And while it's a trick, I do a bunch. It's actually a one-frame trick. So if I want to do it, uh, to get the sure thing, I have to pause buffer it. And now, since my sword is infinitely slashing, the wind cannot blow me off a ledge, like I like I talked about. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because I was going to ask, like, why the, uh, when I was looking at this, I was wondering why you weren't getting blown off the edge, and I thought that was just something like, like, you'd only get blown off the edge normally if you moved, so it's... It's because, my, it's because of my sword. It's constantly slashing. Because of that, I cannot be pushed off a ledge. All right. And all this is necessary because I never got... Goron Lullaby. Like, I, I just don't have it. I, I specifically plan to not have to get it. That's because you can get into the temple without it. And this is the way you would do it. You have to trigger that infinite sword glitch. Uh, you have one chance to do it because if you fall off, if, it, if you get blown off, then basically the trick, uh, you can't do the trick. You can't set it up again. And I navigate my way to around here and then super slide. And if you get lucky, depending on how fast the wind starts up again, it, you won't get blown back into the fairy fountain like I I almost sort of did, but I had enough time to well, Like the, the wind started late enough so that I, it didn't push me enough to screw up the trick 
Okay, so so the wind is always random. Like I was wondering if the wind frequency got got more often if you were closer to the. Goron. No, it's completely random, and that's that's the unfortunate part about this trick, is that you can't really control for it, and you you can just get screwed up, screwed over by luck. If the wind blows too fast, because I time when I pull out that bomb for the super slide, and right. if the next wind after that comes too fast, then the it's screw it's um that that slide won't work, and I'll have to abandon the trick, and. If you were, if you were like carefully observing, I have, I'm missing a quarter heart, and I was missing a bomb when I walked out. It's because I did fail once, and I, but I was actually failed in a way that I could restart the trick, which isn't usually, which isn't usually something you could do. But I was able to walk all the way up the ramp while the wind was blowing, watching out for snowballs, and now I'm in snow at Temple, and I never had to play the lullaby. Nice. Now, obviously, this you could just redo it. If you were doing this normally, but if you were doing a speed run, what would you do if you failed to uh, get up Snowhead without, you know, and lose into the sword glitch? Uh, the, that would be a, on English version, it'd be run over. On Japanese version, uh, you actually have more tolerance, and I'll probably I'll go over that later. But basically, on English version, it's it's harder. Uh, I did a little trick where I actually squeezed through the the block, and then I fell in that hole, which I, I didn't want to. But I just uh, messed that up a little bit, but. Uh, you basically, f I used an icicle to force m my way through the block without having to push it. A really small time saver that I lost because I fell in the hole. But it's, an, it's a funny little trick. And one thing I didn't get to talk about, or that uh, I didn't get to mention, I had to get in here before night. Before night time. Okay. That's because while I was doing that trick, uh, climbing up Snowhead, if it was night time, there would have been a bunch of the little uh, bows, the little snowball oh. enemies. And if any one of those hits me, then they, then it ends my ISG trick. Oh, okay. And I, I would go flying off. So I had to get in here before night time. Uh, like that was a specific, that was a big, um, like a routing thing that I had to do. That was, yeah, and uh, cut it kind of close too. But we got in here fine. It's just uh, very annoying. Yeah, I, I almost forgot. About, I, like I was, when you were climbing, I was wondering if the bows were there, but then I forgot that those were just a nighttime thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, another a trick that I've shown off before in, in Stone Tower. Uh, so we called it a weird, weird shot. I didn't actually specifically say it was called a weird shot. I just started calling it a weird shot. That's what it's called. If I roll into a bomb, pull out my hook shot in a certain way, I shove the hook shot camera out of bounds. And I'm doing it here because I can hook shot this fairy chest that's up here. And that lets me. That, I just skipped a floor of Snowhead. Yeah, that's, that's a really annoying little jump jumping bit. Yeah, normally you'd have to jump across a bunch of invisible blocks and let it form sort of a staircase. But I was able to just skip right to it. Here we'll get to see just how potent that bomb blasting off a ledge is. If, if I do it here, I actually get clear across to the next ramp over here. So you can see how far you go. Normally you can never go that far just by jumping. But the bomb blasts you off really far enough to cross these, these gaps here. Which, of course, I'm doing because I don't want to turn Goron. That's part of my uh, uh, sort of okay, challenge to was, it. Okay, that was self-imposed. Yeah. yeah. When I saw this, I thought you didn't have the Goron mask, and I was kind of wondering. But No, I have it, I, and it would have been faster just to roll across. But I only need the Goron for one thing in this temple, and it won't be for very long. But for everything else, I don't need it. So for this wizard robot fight, I'm going to get to show off what I talked about in Stone Tower. He's gonna. This is him trying to enter the second phase of a fight. But if I get to where he's, he pops up, with my infinite sword, it hits him before he can trigger the the next phase, and I can just kill him while he keeps trying to trigger it. Oh yeah, it saves saves time on cutscene triggers. Yeah, but and and it's also just generally faster, especially because I had the great fairy sword, which is very strong, the strongest sword in the game. Yes. Each each slash, each infinite sword slash too, will do four damage, which is four slashes of a Kokiri sword. It's a lot better. Right. Unfortunately, th this game does not have power crap stabbing where I could store damage like Ocarina of Time did. Uh, in that game, you could do jump attacks and all your infinite sword slashes would be as strong as a jump attack. Can't do that in this game. Just unfortunate. Can't do it on the English version of this game. Can't, so you could do it on the Japanese version? You, or? Yeah, you can. And because of that, there's a couple of things that are faster in the Japanese version because of that. So. Among other things. Yeah, so I know... With normal runs with this temple, like I kind of, I kind of think of this and the Great Bay Temple as the biggest time consumers. Who like this one, like Great Bay, it's like figuring out how to do the valves. But I think this one, like, there's a lot of backtracking and like you mess up. There's a long trip back up yeah, that also makes it time consuming. But 
Yeah, sorta. Of. This this one this temple's really big on on the vertical height. Yeah, but it's good to see it like you know, taken apart like this. Alright, because we beat the Bizarro, we got the fire arrows that I got them pretty quickly and that makes uh you know makes things easier. This is going to be the one thing I need the Gron mask for. See this giant switch here? Oh yeah. So this is literally the only thing I need the Gron mask for. I get on the switch, turn to a Goron, and the switch gets pressed. And that's the only use for Goron. I'm done with being a Goron for this entire temple. There's no no way around it. I couldn't. Oh, there's nothing to do. The Zora isn't like heavy enough to press I, the switch. I, I need flammable. Yeah. I mean, if, if if it still pressed the switch, that'd be fine. Oh, okay, right. But yeah, he doesn't. So. Yeah, like I think the Stone Tower Temple also has a Goron heavy switch too. I mean, not sure if you needed it, but. You know. No, yeah, I. That you know, it has a pound switch, but I was able to skip it. Yeah, I think Stone Tower and Snowhead are the only places that have those larger switches that need the Goron's weight. I think I could be wrong, but I think... Yeah, well, well that was the only one that needs his weight, I think. Well, there might be another one, I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a couple where he needs to pound. But yeah, I can skip all of them. There's the, also a way to get into Pirate Fortress. You need to do that, but it's able to skip it. Yeah. But we already have the fire arrows, and there's actually... I could get to the boss actually pretty quickly. But of course, I need to get all the fairies and stuff. Was there, was there a reason you hookshot it onto that chest? No, it's faster. It just... It's faster. Okay. Right. A little bit. I was actually kind of slow about it, so it's probably not that much faster, but, you know. Yeah, I was going to say. Anytime I use a hookshot on a chest, it, I mean, that's usually just a, a faster way to do to get some, somewhere. Yeah, sure. And unfortunately, I still have, there's, like, this temple has, like, block pushing and stuff. I can't really avoid any of that, because it spawns the chest, and there's, like, no way to, you know, cheat that. Not really. Yeah. Yeah, that, and I think... Well, it's probably, it's probably not relevant, but like once you put that into the hole, it'll it won't like despawn back in the beginning of the room. Yeah. And hmm, let me think. Yeah, there's more just more fairy stuff in this room. Uh, and like I said, I'll be getting maps and compasses in every every place. This one's just sitting here awkwardly. I don't know. It's just in the middle of the room here. Yeah, it's kind of a strange room. Like a lot of things just kind of there. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure I entered it incorrectly. I I, I, I don't always remember the, the right orders, the right order of doing these temples. I'm pretty sure I went in the wrong way. Yeah, I think I think that's only like the second visit, like the first visit. Yeah, you're you're supposed to go through that door, door right there. The key. Which is still locked, by the way. Yeah, I don't need to use that. I don't need to use a key on that door anymore. Yeah. I, that that one was skipped just because of the hook shot. I was because I was able to hook shot that chest. Yeah, the, yeah, the hook shot. It looks like it basically trivializes a lot of the obstacles in this dungeon. Yeah, this temple is very um, ruined, I guess, by the hookshot. Uh, if I, I I use that chest, that fairy chest, to hookshot up, but that's not the only way up to the, the second floor. There's a trick that's um that actually might be kind of well known. There's a there's a torch on the second floor that you can hookshot from the bottom. It's it's pretty precise, but it's it's something that like anyone could potentially do. So I know it's like I had known about it before I like do s any speedrunning tricks. Those, those things that happened just there when you opened the, uh, the staircase and blew up that the uh, crate for the fairy that both the uh, chimes for the you know puzzle unlock or whatever yeah. at the same time. So it was pretty weird. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just part of like uh, because you blow up the wall and you hit blow up the crate, so it's a very small time saver, and then it has yeah plays two sounds at the same time. Yeah, at first I thought it was two fairy things, but no, no, no. It caught me off guard when I first heard it. Uh, you can hookshot this chest behind the the lens wall there. That was that, that was me just kind of um winging it. Like I don't know, I don't like specifically know where it is. I just kind of could guess. That's uh like a lot of the, there's a lot of lens stuff in here, but I don't really I don't ever use the lens. You just kind of uh well I mean you try to remember where stuff is, but. He also just a lot, like I guess a little bit is what I do like for that fairy. Like I know more or less where it is, but not exactly. Yeah, I I didn't know that you could use the hook shot to uh, pop the bubbles. So I think like every other dungeon, like you have the bow or something to pop them. Yeah, and it's and obviously you save ammo, but you, that and that like for stuff like something like that, I only did it since I already had the hook shot equipped. It's just faster to use it than to, to then equip the bow. That's true. So, a lot of weird, small little time things that 
Uh, that's kind of like speedrun ish, or like speedrun habits r rather than just like anything, anything like particular. Right. Yeah, it's, it's weird how strategically placed the torches seem to be, like as <laughs> if they wanted you to, you know. Yeah, that torch in particular is pretty helpful. See, because I just jumped down here. Uh, right. You can just jump in here. But to get back out, uh, I don't want to like waste time with the Deku flower climbing back through the temple. So if I slash my sword to force myself against the edge as close as possible, I can hookshot that same torch that I've been using oh, yeah, and get back to where I just was. And and that's using the uh, whole uh, your momentum from the sword doesn't force you off the ledge thing that we showed earlier, right? Yeah, sort of. Th that time I was like uh, like sort of reverse, like I was recoiling off the wall, but it was pushing me up against the ledge, and you won't fall off because of that. Oh, okay. It's, but yeah, it's a pretty similar thing. It's just like you can't fall off a ledge while you're slashing your sword. And I know other, otherwise getting to that fairy in the hidden room in the, in the main area is really tedious to get with a Deku flower and you have to be on like the fourth floor or whatever. Something like that. No, there's, I mean, there's, I just jumped right in. That's not a, super hard to do. Yeah, it's just like a little more involved if you don't have a hook shot to get you in the right spot. So uh, two dino flows, I uh, take one shot each. And we, Dead. Yeah, we beat these, these terrible dinosaurs. And we finally got all the fairies. I'm glad those two are simple. Yeah. Uh, so, so this thing have four health, and the great fairy sword does four damage. So that's another reason why it's really handy to have. So I have all the fairies. I have the map. I have the compass. I'm done with this temple. I have fire arrows. So I just need to get to the boss. But in, in speed run a sense, or for speed running, that you don't have to push up the the pillar and, and all that crap. If I get on top of this. Uh, hallway here, I can fall in a certain way and then jump slash back onto it. And then once you enter this stairway, we're at the very top floor. Wow. Now, when you use the fire arrows, fire arrows, is that just another time-saving thing? Just you, to break the snowballs with those? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I remember you could turn Goron to break them, but again, I don't want to turn Goron. Yeah. I, I, or, I could also use bombs too, but then the bombs have timers, so. Yeah. Alright, so I don't have the boss key. Something I don't have, but this is probably one of the easiest boss key skips in the game. If I get a, uh, a certain angle, explode backwards. I, I did fail it, so I mean, it, it's not like crazy easy. <laughs> or I, it is, I was just dumb. But get get this angle, have a bomb explode you backwards, and it'll actually shove you through the, the wall out of bounds, and then I could jump into the loading zone. No, is the reason it's easier because, like, you have that little alcove to hot keep Link in there from falling off or whatever. Basically. It's just also, it's also relatively recent. It's a very, it's a really easy like angle to get. Like normally, like, oh, it wasn't that long where you had to line it up with like a C up. But uh, that in that case, it was just like a diagonal controller input. So it's All easy, right. easy to get the angle. Uh, it's kind of hard to fail. Like if you do fail, it just pushes you right back. So it's, it's a nice boss he's kept. But now we're in the goat fight. I'm not turning Goron for this fight. Now, it's, even in the speedrun or even a like a cheese strategy, you don't need to do that. You can actually stand in a certain spot, like further up, and shoot arrows at him until he dies. But that's a little bit lame. I didn't want to do that because uh, yeah, you can stand in a spot where he can never hit you and just shoot him with arrows. Pretty easy. Yeah, I was I was kind of waiting for that. But I have a different way. Explode him with a bomb, and then I just jump attack him a whole bunch with my sword. Wow. And I was able to one cycle him. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, I was, I was waiting for you to. Do the, I was waiting to hear the lightning so you could do the arrow trick, but that was a uh, yeah. nuts. Since that trick is so common, I didn't really feel like doing it. I thought it would be funnier to to just completely like kill him with a sword, just wreck just wreck him with a sword. So did Goat turn around? Because normally I would have expected him to come from behind. He, unless he yeah, he always if you don't like immediately start chasing after him, he'll go down to the end of that hallway and then stop and turn around to try to shoot at you. Okay, so since you weren't there, yeah. In front if of you, him. if you don't change chase after him, he'll he'll turn back around and go after you. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yeah, uh, I mean, there, there's some randomness to it. He won't like always do it like all the time consistently, but generally that's how it works. Yeah. And we beat Snowhead. All right. And uh, this cutscene's a bit long, but because of that, I'll have a couple of things to talk about instead. I will say that this is the I'm getting the Oath to Order right now. Now this you get the old order from the first dungeon you beat, no matter what dungeon it is. I guess you didn't beat the other dungeons nope. properly. Yet. You have to beat. I haven't remember. I specifically haven't beat the bosses yet. So just whatever boss you beat first, and you step into the blue warp. That's when you get the old order. Hmm. And you need this to to beat the game. 
Uh, you obviously need to play the song. Because there is a way to skip this cutscene, but if you skip the auto order, then that's really bad. You won't be able to beat the game. So this is what happens when, on English, if I fall down. If I fall down, I end up back here, and that's bad. Okay. Is there a reason why it doesn't load you from the fairy mountain? Uh, it's a change, because like right now, I'm in the Japanese version. For one thing, you can slash and stay on, like I'm doing here. But if I do fall off, it puts me back over here. Hmm. wonder why they changed that. Yeah, I don't know, but that's why it's harder on English, it's because of that. On Japanese, you can just go back when you fail. But, uh, now we have another thing to sh I have another thing to show off. I'm gonna save at this owl again, while on Epona. And I did this what, back in episode three or something, maybe two. Mm -hmm. If I save on Epona, add an owl and load it back up, I'll still be on Epona. But I'll be able to use any items on her. And if I use the Ocarina and fly away, I'll essentially still be on Epona. Like the game understands me still being on Epona. Like it's a particular state, I guess. But Epona doesn't load on every single map. Like. The game, again, understands me sort of being on Epona, but it'll never load Epona on, like, on this map here. So she's not here. But but if I were to end up back in a spot, in a map, where Epona could be, then I would just suddenly be on her when I go into that loading zone. I'm surprised this game would make that distinction. Yeah, it's, it's really weird, and obviously this is never supposed to be, like, you're not supposed to be in this kind of state. This is a glitch. But, like, if you would play Epona song here, I, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't, like, show up. So, there's just spots where Epona's not ever supposed to be, like, ever. So, you, she just doesn't load. But, for whatever reason, uh, apparently, a snowhead is a place. You can't call her, but she can load. So, once I walk in, I will be on Epona. And there's this weird red mist that's around, and when I step into the warp to the boss, it asks me to, to, to go there, and if I press yes, it tries to take me, but takes me here instead. So this is like the game's only sort of wrong warp. And it, it, I went from Snowhead to Pirate Fortress, one of the rooms in the Pirate Fortress. I did want to route this in, but it didn't really work out. Especially especially because I, I needed the hook shot for a lot of uh, Snowhead tricks. But it's a, it's a funny thing, and it only works for Snowhead. Like, other temples don't do the same thing. Huh. I guess that's a credit to this game not being as broken as Ocarina of Time with less wrong warps. Yeah, I suppose so. And like, and I've mentioned it before that there, the, there, there is a wrong warp, or are wrong warps, but they're just not useful. So, but now I have beaten the temple. I want to get gold dust for the gilded sword. This is a big rock on the way, though. I don't, don't want to have to get another keg. But there is another way in. So if I, I, I mean, I have a whole bunch of bombs equipped, so you can probably guess. But I'm just gonna hover right over it. Unfortunately, it's it's actually very big, so it takes a while. For some reason, I was assuming that the like quote unquote bomb damage needed to destroy the boulder was like combining the bomb chew, the blast mass, and the bomb. No. I was expecting that. Nah, but... it's just I'm. So you can tell like I'm already high up, and I'm supposed to be anywhere. I need to get a little bit higher, and what I'm actually gonna do right now. Uh, it'll be hard to tell, but I'm actually going to hover off of the bomb mass explosion. Which is a bit funny because hovering works by getting your shield hit by an explosion. And I get hit by the bomb mass explosion, which is coming from my face. Of course. It's just the way that the physics works out is that you can block the bomb mask with your shield. And right now I'm actually high enough for, pur for my purposes, but I like misinterpreted it at the time. So I hovered up way higher than I needed to. So I'm skipping all that. Because I actually straight up hovered for like a minute and I didn't need to do that. But you can tell I'm above the loading zone and if I cancel IC by pulling out my sword, I fall right into the loading zone. Oh. I, I'd assume that the blast mask didn't have any recoil when you set it off. No, it, it works just like a bomb. Huh. Uh, there's just no fuse and you can't like pick it up or anything like that. So like, it's just like, it's closer to being a bomb to you than a bomb. So, I guess would it have the same use as a bomb to you, but... Since it's instantaneous, I guess. Yeah, it actually does. Except I just can't target it like a cool bomb shoes, which is how I change angles for hovering. Ah. But, right. but yeah, it does have a lot of similar uses. But now we're at the Goron race. I know a lot of people hate Goron racing. I did a little thing where I started the Goron spike roll before this race started. That's not like really a glitch or anything. Yeah, that, that I was about to say that that seemed like a really easy 
solution to make this easier, but... It, it doesn't even make it easier. Like, it makes it so that you can't get hit right at the beginning. Yeah. And just, like, screwed over. But it doesn't, like, get you a head start or anything. All uh, The big problem everyone has is that these Gorons have, like, crazy rubber banding, right? Yeah, they do. Uh, there's, like, no way to get really far ahead of them. They'll just, you know, show up. It doesn't matter how fast you're going. They'll, they'll be able to keep up with you. But because of that, um, they don't really get that... They can't really get far ahead of you either. So... Well, it, obviously it is tricky. It's very easy to recover from failures. Like right now, I just got hit, or I ran into something and stopped. But that's not actually like an issue, because like right around here, I think the Gorons actually start slowing down. Like it feels that way to me. And from here, as long as you like uh, attempt to hit the Gorons that are in front of you, like that, generally that means you're about, you're gonna win. So if you just keep them, like if you if you hit them, it slows them down enough so that usually you can win. Now, when they hit you, is there like a certain amount of hits you can take before you just face plant? Because I know you can get you can wipe out if they hit you right. Yeah, but it's not like a number of hits. It's it's like a way they hit you, but I'm not sure. I don't think yeah. like it's like super codified or anything. It's just like sometimes like if they come at you at the right angle or they hit you in a certain way, yeah, you'll just stop. No, those are some good skips. You just have to try to like hit them on the sides. Ah. Uh, that's what I try to do, anyways. So, yeah, there's, there's some pretty good lake hops right there as a Goron. You have to be careful because uh, falling into a lake as a Goron, he just drowns and it voids you back to where you start. But yeah. And then all I did, I just go here to buy the um, the biggest bomb bag. I have 40 bombs now. Alright. Pretty big, like, rupee cost, which is why I farmed so many earlier. And now I'm gonna go back to Snowhead so I can turn in my fairies. And if you saw, I actually put my cursor on Romani, Ma Romani Ranch. And that's just what the. What that. It's what Snowhead sort of ties to from the map oh. in my weird mm -hmm. owl glitch. Weird. Yeah. So Romani Ranch goes here. Uh, and like, I've shown it off. I've never like, I, I tried to point it out when I could. But yeah, like, so if I wanted to go here, I had to put it on Romani Ranch. If I wanted to go to Romani Ranch, I have to put it on Clocktown. If I want to go to Clocktown, I have to put it on uh, whatever's right below Clocktown. I forget what it is. I think it might be um, Southern, the, Swamp, Southern Swamp, right? Yeah. If I want to go to Southern Swamp, I actually need Akana Graveyard. Hmm. If I want to go to Akana Canyon, that's Akana Canyon. Great Bay actually goes to Great Bay. Zora Cape goes to Zora Cape. Oh, wow. And I think that's all of them. Oh, Gor and uh, Deku Palace goes to Goron Village. Ah. So I, I don't like know exactly why it's all like that. I just how they're indexed. It just that's just how it works out. There are other spots on the map, I think. And at least I, I think, yeah, I'm not super sure, but those just won't work. Uh, yeah. You could actually put the cursor on the, the Z and R buttons on the sides, but those will those will uh, crash the game. <laughs> well, they, they might soft lock the game. So I never want to do that. And uh, one. That's it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, w when you got the enhanced magic meter, is there a reason you got it after the Goron race, or were you just sure enough that you wouldn't run out of MP during the races? I was sure enough, and it was also just uh, faster to just go straight to the Goron races. Otherwise, I'd have to fly to Snowhead and then fly back to the Mountain Village. Uh. It's a very, it's like a very small thing, but I didn't want to waste more time on on soaring around. Hmm. And, and that, that was basically it. Gotcha. And all I have left to do here was to get the Gilded Sword. So I'm gonna turn it, turn in my Razor Sword, and get the Gilda Sword, which uh, I mean I think people would know, but Gilda Sword is permanent, unlike the Razor Sword. Yeah, yeah you keep it through time. I I'm, I don't even really need to get the Gilda Sword. I have a better sword already. But you know, for completion's sake. Yeah, and to do I'm gonna get it right now instead of waiting. I still had like what six hours or eight hours left on this day, but it's, that that's not really important anymore. I've I've beaten most of the temples already. So I, I don't need much more time, so I'm not super worried about that. I was actually pretty, uh, I, I was, I was, I don't know. I, I needed more, uh, a lot of time to beat Stone Tower and all that because I needed to get into Snowhead before night, but now we're, we have a, a little bit more leeway. Yeah, that's, that's a nice thing about the uh, sword building. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, having, you know, it's only till the next day instead of anything fancier. Yep. And, and we got the Gilded Sword and that'll be the end of the episode. And that'll be it. Next time we'll actually do Woodfall and the Conor Graveyard stuff. So thanks for watching, everyone. Right. Goodbye. See you.